Hey guys, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Today I'm going to start quilting on my wonky monster quilt, and I've had a few requests to actually show me quilting it. I'm going to be quilting it on my domestic sewing machine. I am sewing on a Juki Exceed. It's a HZL-F600, if you know, it's just, it's a Juki. I have a special table that I have set up here. It comes with the extendable table that you just go ahead and pop on. I've talked to you many times about how you really need to have some extra support for your quilt. You need something that's going to hold the weight. I'm going, I've never used this table for quilting yet. I'm going to see how it feels with this little extension. And if not, I'm going to put the regular one back on and I'm just going to use my desk down here to support it. But I think this is going to give me a nice amount of support. And then I have, I have a, like I said, my, my sewing machine sitting on a desk. It's going to have, the, the desk is going to hold the weight of the quilt. And I'm also going to have the, whatever is coming this way is going to sit into my lap. I have a little extra light up here. So I'm hoping that's going to make everything really visible for you. I was going to do some fancy squares and some geometric designs in this quilt, but when I tested it out on a block, I'm like, ah, I really don't like it. So I had to take the seam ripper and pull it all out. And I'm just going to go to my standby free motion. And I'm going to wiggle ziggle all over the place. And that's going to give the, it's going to give that quilt that nice uh, crinkle effect that I like. And when I put it through the wash, the, it's, it has cotton batting, so it should kind of sprinkle it up a little bit and make it nice and nice and poofy and wrinkly the way I like it. Now you guys know I do not put music over my videos. Um, one, I've never learned how, and two, I'm not really a fan of watching videos with a lot of music anyway. So I'm going to do my usual. I'm going to talk to you about what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do a little bit of real time free motion. And then depending on how long the video gets, I'm going to show you how to move it around through the sewing machine and my process as I'm doing the quilting. And then if we have enough time, I'll just speed it up at the end and you'll just watch me do it a little bit more. Now I have my quilting gloves on. These are Fonz and Porters. I picked them up at Joann's. They're starting to wear out and the, the little rubber beads here are wearing down. So I'm going to need to pick up a new pair. But you can use, you can use some, they have gardening gloves that are like this. You don't really want anything that's too heavy duty and hot, but you can get these style quilting gloves anywhere. I don't like the ones that just have the fingertips that are kind of rubberized. I like it so that the whole entire palm of my hand has all these little bumpies on it so I can grip the quilt really well and it doesn't slide around. Now my tabletop here slides really well, so that's going to help move my quilt around. I have my little container that I keep my pins in, my safety pins, so as they get in my way, since I set this quilt up for straight line quilting, I'm pretty sure with the amount of pins that I put in here that I'm going to have some that are in the way on a regular basis. So I'm going to want to keep this nearby because I'm going to be tossing pins in it quite regularly. Now I don't do anything particular on where I'm going to start. I start on an edge. And I try to start, you know, anywhere, like halfway in the middle. A lot of times when people are quilting, they say to start in the center of your quilt and quilt your way out. But the way I do my free motion, I just kind of do it in quadrants. Now, when I first start about it, I think about doing it in like a four patch. I'll do this upper quadrant, then I'll come down here and then over here and up there and all that. But that really just works out great in the beginning in my head because as I start doing it, I find out that... I tend to work my way around certain border areas and do the parts that are easier to get to. And then I work my way into the center and try to do that. I try to stay in a grid to where I'm doing columns. I'm not much of a side to side. I'm more of a vertical versus horizontal. But as I get going, I tend to just get into the zen of it and where I end up, I end up. I just try to make sure that I don't quilt all around the quilt and have like a spot in the center that needs quilting. I always want to leave myself an escape plan so that when uh, if my bobbin's starting to run out, I know that I can get over to the side. I prefer not to change my bobbin in the middle of a quilt, but it happens. It's got to be done. I have my little bobbin holder here. I am using this pale yellow thread because I thought it was going to go good with this quilt. It's going to kind of show up a little bit on the green, but it's going to also disappear in a lot of places. I started with four bobbins, and if I have to make more, I will. But this is just a lap throw, so that should be good for me. So I make sure I'm comfortable. 
I'm going to have this big heavy quilt in my lap. I usually put a fan on in the room to make sure it doesn't get too warm. But since you're going into winter, it shouldn't be too bad for you. I make sure things are all kind of fluffed up and laying nicely in my lap, almost as if I'm wearing the quilt, me and the table. And I don't want it to get all bunched up. So when I'm, when I'm moving the quilt around, I don't want to fight with it. I tried rolling the edges and I tried using those clips, but I spent more time rolling and unrolling than I actually did quilting. So I decided to find my own way. And I just kind of like, with most things, I just dig right in and go for it. I leave everything loose and I kind of fold and mush things up. I'm going to put a link in the iCard to my, I did a fake quilting video where I'd already quilted the quilt, but I just wanted to show you how I pushed it through the machine. So now we're going to actually see the actual quilting this time, but you'll get an idea. And I talk a lot in that video because, you know, I talk a lot and I gave a couple different tips and tricks that way and you'll get more today or I'll give you the same ones over again. You never know. All right, so my quilt, the way I'm looking at it right now, it is three blocks this way, three blocks wide, and it's four blocks long. So I'm gonna start here. This is uh, actually happens to be the top of my quilt, and I'm gonna start with the center block. It takes a little bit. You kinda wanna think through where you're gonna go with your plan, and I think what I'm going to do for this quilt is I'm gonna start and do this center column, since I have three blocks wide, so that's three columns. I'm going to start in the center column and I'm just going to go ahead and quilt straight down in my free motion pattern. So that'll give me the center of my quilt and it'll kind of anchor it so as I'm going I can work my way out. I'm going to come out to the edge here and I'm going to make sure that my backing is not folded under in any way so that'll get caught in the quilt. I want to make sure everything's laying nice and flat. And this part over here, I'm just kind of going to bunch it up here. And as I'm moving it through, I'm just going to move it through the quilt like this. And whatever extras over here getting bunched up, it'll just slide through. This is going to be my first time doing any size quilt on this new sewing machine, with, especially with the free motion. So we're going to see how it works together. Now remember with free motion, it's your machine is just going up and down at a speed. You have to actually move the quilt to get the quilting done. So you have to find a way to match the speed of your foot in the sewing machine and your hands. So if you have your foot pedal all the way down, pedal to the metal, and your hands are going super slow, you're not gonna get nice stitches. And if you've got your machine going slow, but your hands are moving really fast, once again, you're gonna get eyelashes and you're gonna have wonky stitches. So it's always good to practice on a separate piece of fabric because you want to make a sandwich like your quilt. So you want to have your fabric and your, your batting and your backing. And it's sometimes you can just use maybe a 12 or 16 inch piece, make a practice bra or fabric. And after you've done your practice quilting on it, you can turn it into a pillow cover. And if you use the same fabric from your quilt, then you'll have an additional gift to go with your quilt or to have in your house to match. Now, if you want a lot of really good information and good practice tips and different ways of quilting, Leah Day on YouTube, I'll see if I can remember to put it up in the iCard again. She has all kinds of wonderful tutorials. She has a blog that she does fantastic things on. She has little samples that she works you through the progress. So you start as a beginner and then as you work through her little program that she has, you'll actually master your quilting and be able to do a lot of different designs. Me, I kind of just like my free motion. I, I just enjoy the process of free motion, so that's mostly what I do. So I'm going to start right out here outside of my quilt. Drop my feed dogs, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my needle down and up and bring that bobbin thread up. That way they're both at the top, and I won't get any weird bird nests on the back. When I'm free motion quilting, anytime I stop, I always stop with needle down because that keeps you from having big long stitches if your quilt moves because of the weight of the quilt is going to move it if you don't have the needle holding it down. Then I'm just going to take my hands and I'm just going to move my quilt around like this and do my quilting. I'm going to work around my pins if I can, move the ones I have to, 
because I'm using a basic overall meander, I can just work around the pins for the most part. You just want to be careful because you don't want to stitch over them. You don't want to stitch them to your quilt and you don't want your needle to get stuck in them. A lot of times my needle will get stuck in the eye of the pin and that's never fun. I guess since it's a safety pin, it's really the head of the pin, not the eye. But you should know where, you kind of figure out where I'm going, right? All right, I'm all set up. I have my machine set up for free motion quilting. I've dropped my feed dogs. With this machine, I do not need to put the stitch length down to zero because with dropping the feed dogs, it essentially does that for me. If you're unable to drop your feed dogs, you can drop your stitch length down to zero. I'm not... You know, this is not like I'm all the, I don't have wild and crazy knowledge on how to do these for each machine. A lot of times you can Google your machine and how to free motion quilt on it, and there'll be plenty of tips and tricks and videos for you to learn from. This is just the way I do it. Right or wrong, this is the way it works for me. Now I'm going to take my machine and I'm going to slowly come back over into my quilt so that I get over the edge of my border here. And go ahead and just snip my thread so that I don't stitch over them. That's just the tail that when I started. All right. I don't know why all of a sudden I got really nervous doing it here. I guess it's because it's the first time on this machine and I got you all here watching me. Here we go. Now I just noticed I've got my machine uh, set a little bit slow because it goes from turtle to rabbit. It's about halfway from when I was doing another project. I'm going to bump that up to full. But as you see, I stopped with my needle down. I'm actually at the edge where I'm going to put my binding so it's okay. But when I start back up, if I happen to stop anywhere else in my quilt, I like to let the needle go up and down two or three times and then I start stitching because otherwise you get like this little skip stitch. And then I just make like little wiggly wormy paths everywhere. And I'm just pushing down with my hands. And moving it around. I try to vary my design a little bit. So that I don't have the same exact little amoeba looking things. Just move my quilt and readjust it. So my goal is as I'm going down this panel, I'm just going to basically go left and right as I wiggle and maybe a little up and downs to mix it up. I can adjust my speed with my foot pedal just as if I was sewing. It's a new machine, so it's gonna take me a couple quilts to find my rhythm. So if it's the first time you're doing it, don't worry, it'll take you a little bit of time to get used to it. My left hand is just kind of moving the quilt and pulling it to and fro, and my right hand is just kind of guiding this extra section over. And with this meander, I don't want to only do it in the border, I want to make sure that I'm dipping down into my quilt so it's not a straight line. Even though I'm meandering, I don't want my quilting to be straight. I don't want it to look like I only did the border. to stop take a moment readjust your quilt I can always gently fold this over a little bit but I have enough space with this sewing machine that it's just gonna hold it out of the way
let it go up and down a couple times before I'm moving. I also kind of went a little bit towards the seam here and I stopped in a spot where it's not going to be as obvious. Like this yellow really pops on the green, but it doesn't show as uh, this border green, but it doesn't show as much in any of the colors in here. So I can stop along here, move my things around a little bit and then go from there. doing the free motion like this if you're feeling any stress in your shoulders you kind of want to try to relax them a little bit maybe set a timer on your phone for 20 minutes and every 20 minutes get up kind of roll your shoulders walk around a little not only do I have to remember to move but I tend to forget to also get something to drink so while I'm working during those 20 or 30 minute times, I like to grab myself something to drink, just move around a little bit, check your bobbin. See, I can go back up this way. Since this is my first column, anything that I miss, I can go ahead and catch after. Sometimes I just have to readjust as you see, I, my arm, as I was pulling my quilt, and we were, I was going this way to sew, so I'm pulling the extra quilt this way. My arm got too far away from me, so I have to stop so I can bring my hands back together. Because all I was doing was feeling a stretch. A stretch in my armpit area, because that's why you're just moving your arm out too far. So stopped in the yellow, so it's easy to hide my starts and stops. Start back up. They say like you should only go forward or backwards, but I can see pretty good with my machine. I'm not watching where the needle is going up and down generally. I'm kind of watching the quilt around it and where I'm moving to and from. That way I can watch out for those pins, fill in the big empty spaces that I've missed. Every machine's going to be different. And how much space you have between your needle and the right side of the machine is going to make the difference. It's a really big difference. You can do it with a small area. But if you have a wider area like this, it's really nice. This sewing machine was meant for quilting. So it has a large throat space. Space between the needle and the right hand side of the machine. that I'm going over into this other column. It's just going to blend all the quilting together. And that's kind of how I end up where I think I'm doing columns, but I end up doing weird like U-shaped designs.
to, I can feel the quilt pulling against the, I have arms on my desk chair, so this part's pulling against the arms. So I need to go ahead and just rearrange myself a little bit. I'm starting to get the weight of the quilt going underneath the machine here. So as I'm getting farther over to the left side of it, and I have more quilt squished under here, I'm feeling it. But that's okay, because this is going to be the hardest part to quilt, this center panel, because I have three columns, as I said. So once I get the center column, these two I'm never going to have but, uh, what, 16 or 18 inches that I'm going to be working on total. And this time I have in a whole column and then this column. So at some points I have two columns. So if my columns are maybe 16 inches, I've got 32 inches of quilt squished underneath here. Once I get this done, like I said, it's the hardest part. Then I only have to do this little bit on each side. So I like to get the hardest part done first, and they say to start in the center anyways. The center is the hardest part. So there we go, we're gonna get the center done. So I'm gonna keep working on it this way. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video for now, and then once I finish this column, I'll go ahead and show you how it looks when I'm doing uh, one of the outside columns. So I've gone ahead and I finished this one column down the center, and I still, I'm leaving all my pins in. I'm not going to take those out or anything. But my first thought is always going to be to check my bobbin. Now my bobbin is definitely low. There's not that much left to it. I would never make it through another column. Even if this is, if it's anything less than half, I mean, I'm gonna know if I put a brand new bobbin in and it takes more than half the bobbin to do a column, that if I have less than half left, I'm obviously not gonna have enough to quilt the next column. And I, like I said, I really don't enjoy changing out my bobbin in the middle of the quilt. I wanna. I don't want to be a surprise and all of a sudden find out that I've been stitching for a few seconds with no bobbin. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to change out my bobbin now. And bobbins are real easy to change out anyway, so there's it's like it's not that big of a deal why you stopped. Now's a good time to go ahead and just walk around the room a little bit, go pet your cat, say hello to your children because you've been ignoring them for the past 20 minutes or get a drink and keep ignoring all your family so that they don't interrupt you because once you get everyone to leave you alone for 20 minutes while you're quilting, you may as well take advantage of it and let them leave you alone for another 20 minutes so you can do the next section. So I'm just going to rearrange my quilt. I'm still just working top to bottom. I don't feel the need at this point. I mean, I can't really switch it around because I, I need to go on. I want the bulk of my quilt to the left hand side of my needle. Now when I go to do my first column, I will have to switch it around then. And we're just gonna go through the same process that we did. Get our quilt nice and comfortable. Now since I have the two columns over to the side, I need to make sure that the quilt is fully supported on this side. I have plenty of room on this long extended table and I've got my desk. So I know the weight of this quilt isn't going to be pulling down from the needle. I won't be struggling against the weight of the quilt. Once you get yourself kind of situated, it takes a little bit of moving everything around and finagling and getting it all organized. But then once you get it that way, you're in good shape. It's easy to start moving. Make sure my backing, even though it's pinned, that is not getting done over. If your backing were to fold under and you were to stitch all the way through all this and this corner, it is really hard and annoying to get those stitches out. So it's a good idea to just keep checking it regularly. Make sure you're only working on a flat piece of quilt here. You have no extra quilt underneath it. I used the automatic cutter, so I need to bring my thread back up to the top with a new bobbin. needle down, take a couple stitches, then I can snip this tail because once again I don't want to be stitching over my tail because that'll be hard to get out. And now I'm going to quilt this column. As you can see this is going to be the most just one column, that's the most I'm gonna have over on the right hand side. 
this is where I left off quilting. This is where I have the rest of my quilt, so it's not going to be too much. I'm going to start over, well, I'm basically in the center still, but I'm going to work my way over this way so I can get the bulk of it done. Now, if I wanted to, I can just do down this part of it, but I've been kind of having fun going back and forth doing the whole column. I'm kind of just making it a game, going in and out of the pins, wiggling it around. This machine is actually quilting like a dream. It is definitely, I know people say it all the time, it's just a thing, but it's like quilting through butter. The needle just goes up and down. It's got a nice amount of power. It's just very smooth. It's not as loud as my other machine was, my brother. I do hear the needle going clunk and clunk when you're going over seams, because that's perfectly normal. But other than that, it's a nice smooth process. By now you probably actually should have found a little bit of your rhythm. Although you may still have some uneven stitches and it's okay. If you're using cotton batting, when you wash it, your stitches are going to sink down into the quilt, into the batting and stuff. So they're not going to be as pronounced and as long as it's not a really big obvious dis uh, distinguished difference between size of your stitches, it's not going to be noticeable. Now as you get going, if you want to, you can actually draw designs or write words in your free motion quilting. I'm not going to do it in this quilt, but if I were making something for family members, I like to put names in it, I like stars and hearts. Maybe if, like, like my father always had special sayings he would say, you know, he'd always yell at everyone to get off the grass and stuff like that. I might want to put some words like that in, something that you have a family member that says a lot. If you're making it for a child, you can put their name in it and it can kind of be a um, hide and seek thing. A little treasure hunt, see if they can find their name or letters of the alphabet written in the quilt. But you see, I'm just kind of like moving my hands and like almost, almost petting it, just walking with my hands across the quilt. letting it just smoothly glide. Now if you're not gliding easily over your machine, then you can always find one of, they have special Teflon sheets that you can put on your machine to make it glide easier. sliding down a little and I can feel that it's it's I'm pulling on it it's more of more of a pressure force I'm just gonna rearrange my quilt flip it around a little more in my lap make sure this part's not laying down on the floor anywhere I wouldn't like tuck it under my machine because it would get stuck there and once again I'd be pulling on it just keep going As you can hear, my machine is not going full speed. It does not have to be a race. You don't have to go super fast. If you feel comfortable going turtle speed, then go turtle speed. It'll take you a little bit longer to get your quilt, but if you go super fast and you're constantly having to pick out your stitches with your seam ripper, you're gonna take the same amount of time anyway, so you may as well go nice and slow and get it done right. Learn the technique and the speed will come later, just like anything in life. Now when I'm coming over to this side where I've already quilted, I just make sure that there's no gaps anywhere, that if there's a certain part in the border area that I need to, in the sashing, I need to kind of dip in a little bit to make it fill in a gap. As 
as you can see, my right arm, if you can see that, I'm actually using my right arm to move the quilt around because my hand went farther than I could stretch. And then as it comes back, I can reposition my hand. I told you guys, I'm a real professional at this. Just watch this for just a few more moments and then I'll stop. Maybe I'll do a little vertical line through here. You just need to make sure you're not stitching yourself into a corner because otherwise you'll have to stop, break your thread, and then go start over again. Relax your shoulders. Don't hold a lot of tension. Maybe put on a slow to medium tempo music. Maybe not fast rock because that will make you want to sew faster. And the point right now is just to get your stitches nice and even. Just chugging along. Now once I completely finish this quilt, I'm going to need to put a new needle in my sewing machine because the process of making all the pieces, quilting it and putting it on the binding is definitely going to dull my needle. And when I start my next project, I want to have a nice fresh sharp needle. It's going to make everything stitch out nice and smoothly. who are worried about how difficult this might be, I find that it's relatively easy. I find it harder to do straight line and stitch in the ditch than I do free motion quilting because I don't need to be in any specific spot. I'm just kind of moving it around. Readjust the weight of my quilt. have to be exactly in the ditch. I don't have to have all my lines perfectly straight and a half inch apart or anything like that. I can just kind of wander around the map. It's kind of like a road map. What road am I going to travel on next? Up over the mountains, down in the valley. I don't know, when you're sitting here by yourself, and right now I don't have any music or TV on or anything, you kind of play games in your mind to keep yourself from going crazy. to a project thinking it's going to be too difficult for you and too hard and you're not going to be able to do it, you're not going to be able to do it. But if you take everything in small little chunks, tell yourself you may need to practice a little, but you got this, you can do it. I have faith in you. Whether you have a basic beginner sewing machine or you have something more fancier, meant for quilting like this Juki. I hope that helped everyone who had any questions. If you have any more questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you like it. There's a share button underneath the video if you'd like to share it on Facebook or with any of your other friends who might want to see some free motion quilting. Click the subscribe button and you'll be notified. Well, I'd love to have you as a subscriber, and if you do subscribe, if you ring that little bell, 
YouTube will notify you when I have a new video up. And that way you won't miss anything. I'm playing around a little bit with the times that my videos come out. I think I've got a, most of them coming out at 9 a.m. right now. And that seems to be working pretty good. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me in my craft room. And I'll see you guys later. Bye!